In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn any video into an animated oil painting using DaVinci Resolve. Now for this effect, we're going to use actual pictures of paint strokes, and that'll give it that extra touch of realism that takes this effect to the next level. We can get these pictures using Canva, which is an online design tool. It's what I use to make my thumbnails, and you can sign up for a free account. They're not sponsoring this or anything, it's just what I use. So in Canva, go to create a new design, then click custom size, and I want this to be 500 by 500, and I'll hit create a new design. So I can click on the canvas here, I'm going to change the background color to black, then in the elements tab, I can search for paint, and then go to the graphics tab, and now I can choose one of these paint graphics. You want to look for one that has texture to it, not one of these that has a solid color to it. So I think I'll start with this one here, just scale that to place. Now I want this to be just black and white. So I can hit edit photo, go to adjust, then scroll down and bring down the saturation all the way. And maybe bring up the brightness a little bit. Now I can add another page and just do the same thing, choosing a different asset this time, kind of like this one. And just go through and do the same thing until you have about three or four assets. Now I'm going to go through and give each of them a different name, just to keep things easier to keep track of. Now I can go to share, download, and just download them all. Now this is going to be downloaded as a zip file, so you can just unzip that. So now in Fusion, I got my footage here. Now for this effect, I'm going to be doing two passes, a more detailed pass with smaller brush strokes for the subject than one with bigger strokes for the background. So I need to separate the girl from the background. Now for this shot, I'm actually pretty lucky because the sky is basically a blue screen. So I can add a delta key here. I'm just hitting shift space to bring up the toolbar and I can just choose a point of the sky. I can press A to get a better view of what's going on. Then in the mat tab, I can just kind of crush these down. And then I'll add a garbage mat, get rid of the stuff I don't want. Now this is a pretty rough key just for the tutorial. Obviously, that's not going to work for every shot. So you could use the magic mask if you have the studio version of Resolve. Or honestly, since we're just going to be making this more abstract, then you could get away with just using a loose mask. Next, I'm going to add a P emitter and a P render. Just drag that out. Then the P render, I can change the output mode to 2D. Bring that to the screen. In the P emitter, I want to go to region and change the region to bitmap. Then I can plug my delta key into that. Then the controls, I can bring the number all the way up to 100 and change the color to use color from region. Then in the style, I'll change the style to bitmap. Now I can bring in one of the brushes that we downloaded from Canva. I'm going to start out with the splotch, I think. Now if I bring this to the screen, it's on a black background. So to remove that, I can search for a luma keyer and plug that into the P-emitter. Now if I bring that to the screen. So to start, I can go to the controls and bring the number up something like a thousand and bring the lifespan down to one. And looking at this, I think I need to go into the luma keyer and just bring up the low point a little bit. That gets rid of that harsh edge we're seeing. Then back in the P-emitter, under the rotation, I can bring up the Z variance a bunch. Then the style, under size controls, I'll bring up the size variance a little bit. And then under the color controls, under the color variance, I can take the red, green, and blue variants and bring those all to 0.1. Basically, we want to add a lot of variants to the particles to disguise the fact that it's just the same picture. To add even more variation, I can control C, copy the P-emitter, then hit control shift V, and that'll make an instance node. Then I can right click and pull out from the delta key here, plug that into the instance, and then I can choose the region bitmap. Then I can bring down another one of my brushes, I think splatter this time. Again, add a luma key here plug that into the instance. If I try to bring this to the viewer, nothing happens. That's because we don't have a render, but we can actually use the same render. If I drag out, pull this over the P-emitter, that'll make a P-merge. So now if I bring that, now it's added to the other brushes. And again, I think I need to bring up the low point of the Luma keyer. Now I can do the same thing with my other two brushes. And because these are all instance P-emitters, if I change the settings of any of them, like bring up the size, it's going to bring up the size in all of them. So if I only want to change the size of one of them, I can bring this up, add a transform under that, and then scale it inside of that. And if you want to see what it would look like without one of the brushes, you can select all of that brush and then hit Control P, and that'll disable that brush. Now for the background, I can select this whole particle setup, hit Control C, and then just paste it down here. Then I can take my media in and plug it into all the P emitters. Now I can go ahead and delete these two because I only want the kind of splotchy brushes. Then in the P emitter, I'm going to bring down the number to 100. Then in the style, I'm going to bring up the size until it covers the full screen. I think I'll try one. Yeah, that looks good. Now I can merge the subject over the background. Now if I hit play, it's pretty flickery. So after the subject, I can add a stop motion node and bring the frame repeat to two. Then I can add another stop motion after the background and set that frame repeat to four. 
So that gives it a cool stop motion look and it also gives some separation between the subject and background by giving them different frame rates. Now one thing that's worth noting is the settings I use are just for this shot. Depending on how close or far away your subject is, you might have to play around with different numbers. I would especially play around with the number of particles and the size of the particles. Those are the settings that affect the final look the most. Just really play around with it until it looks right. Now this effect would work really well for something like a music video. And if you want to check out another music video effect, then check out this video here where I show you how to make this animated neon outline.